Today on Dad Hut, I'm going to be talking about the five accessories I think you should get for your PlayStation 5. Let's go. What's up everybody? Welcome back to Dad Hut. Today, uh, if you just got a PS5 for Christmas or uh, maybe you've had one for a while and you're wondering, hey, what kind of accessories should I get? Uh, like I said, or you got one for Christmas and now you got some Christmas money to burn and you want to get some games or some uh, some accessories, I'm going to help you out here and give you the five best accessories I think you should get for a PlayStation 5. I had the PlayStation 5 since launch day, so I've had plenty of time to mess with it and, and, and have several accessories and figure out which ones I think are the best and which ones I think you get the most use out of. So let's go. So one of the accessories I think you should definitely, definitely get is a remote control charger. Uh, it's almost 2024 now. I don't know who is playing with a wired controller nowadays, but you do not want to be plugging your controller in to charge it or playing wired so that you uh, have the power in the controller. Get yourself a uh, controller uh, charger. These things are very, very affordable. One of the first accessories you should buy. All right, so let's talk about portable gaming now with the PS5. So PlayStation has kind of their own um, little portable device that just came out and it's very expensive. I think it's like $300. Um, it looks really nice. You know, you can play with, you know, the, um, uh, the PlayStation controller. It comes with a screen and everything, but it is just, uh, using the remote play app to play your PlayStation. And you can do that on a backbone controller. It is literally connecting the same way as the $300 version. Uh, and you can get the backbone for probably under a hundred dollars right now, especially if you go used, but you just use your cell phone as the screen instead of one just permanently being on there like the PlayStation version. So the backbone controller, uh, again, this is not going to turn it into a Nintendo switch where you're just going to be able to go anywhere you want. You do have to have a internet connection and you will need to have an interconnect internet connection with the expensive PlayStation one as well, because it's just going to be sharing your screen to uh, from your PS5. It's just going to be doing it remotely. Um, so you will need to have an internet connection and you'll your PS5, wherever you keep it, will need to be on or at least on standby mode so you can turn it on and off from wherever you're going to play. But it's a great little option if you just want to like maybe lounge in your bed or lay on the couch and play instead of like having to be at a desk or wherever it is your normal gaming is. So uh, Way better, cheaper option than the $300 PlayStation version. Get the backbone. They even make a PlayStation Edition 1, so it, it looks like a PlayStation controller. It's white and has the square X and all that. So, and you just plug in your phone and you're good to go. So one of the things people complain about a lot on the new consoles, the Xbox and the PlayStation, is storage. So upgrading your storage is actually very, very simple. Um, it can be expensive, but it can also be affordable depending on how much storage you want to add. But I highly recommend adding some kind of storage to your PlayStation so you're not constantly having to delete uh, games. You don't need to have a ton. I mean, if I guess if you never want to delete games, you're going to need to to spend a lot, lot more. But if you just want to be able to add, you know, maybe five to ten more games on your on your storage so that you don't have to constantly delete them. Upgrading the PlayStation 5 storage is super simple, super easy to do. I even have a video on it, which I'll link. Um, and it's and it's it's affordable. Uh, you can add like one terabyte for like under a hundred bucks uh, right now, and uh, you can have just you know, like I said, five to ten more games depending on how big they are stored on your PlayStation. It plays directly off of the expansion card, so you don't need to like move anything over. Uh, highly recommend doing it. It will just make life easier so you don't have to delete and reinstall games constantly. All right, so let's talk about audio. If you do multiplayer, uh, you need to talk to your party or your group or your chat, your friends, whatever, uh, you're gonna need a pair of headphones. The Steel Series Arctic 7P is what I use. Um, they are the most comfortable pair of headphones I have ever gamed with. Um, they don't have like that fake plastic stuff around the ears. It's really nice and soft and cloth and it's got the 3D audio. It is a really, really nice uh, headphone set for your PS5. It's specifically made for the PlayStation 5. Um, I highly, highly recommend it. If you are on a tighter budget, you can always go with the, the PlayStation. I think they're called the Pulse uh, headset, which is a little bit cheaper. 
Uh, I have used those before. The sound quality is superb. It's really good. It's just like the SteelSeries Arctic 7P. Uh, so you're not gonna lose anything on audio. I just find that the SteelSeries one is way more comfortable, especially for uh, if you're playing a gaming session, a long gaming session. Um, but those are definitely two options you're definitely gonna wanna look at. Uh, if you're trying to do any kind of multiplayer or, you know, playing some kind of like, you know, Call of Duty or something and you're going to be talking to your teammates and things like that. Or if you're looking to just game and kind of immerse yourself even more with the 3D audio, you're going to want to get a pair of headphones that do that. And I would recommend the Steel Series because it is just, it's super high quality. Okay, so this next one is, is pretty, pretty expensive and I can understand how it might be hard to justify paying $200 for a controller and I'm talking about the PlayStation Pro controller um, Especially when the PlayStation itself is you know 500 and this is almost half of that. I get it, but hear me out uh, If you game casually you don't need this if you're just like a once a week or you know Occasionally you turn on your PlayStation and you'll play a game you can skip this you don't need this but if you are somebody who plays your PlayStation a lot uh, you maybe turn it on every day and are playing it several times a week. I, I would suggest investing in the PlayStation Pro Controller. And the reason why is you will be able to fix stick drift. Uh, stick drift, if you know uh, anything about that, is where your controller is a little bit off and it will just kind of like move your character left, right, up or down, whatever way the stick is drifting, even though you're not touching anything. Nintendo Switch was notorious for this, still is, um, and the PlayStation is no different. It will get it. Um, I've had it happen with two controllers so far, um, and now it doesn't happen right away. It's not nearly as bad as the Nintendo Switch, but if you do play a lot, you're going to get this eventually. Uh, the great thing about the Pro Controller, not to mention all the other things that it can do, but the big selling point is you can replace the analog stick on a Pro Controller for $20. So if it does break and you do get stick drift on a pro controller, it is a quick fix. If it happens on a regular controller and you can't handle playing with it, it's bothering you, it's gonna cost you 50 to $70 every time to get a new controller. So again, I don't think it's a problem if you don't game that often because you probably won't experience it. Uh, and if you do, you probably will be able to play through it because you're just casually gaming. But if you play a lot or if you play something competitive, you're definitely not going to want any stick drift. And the Pro Controller, again, there's so many other things it can do. You can map buttons. You've got the paddles on the back. Uh, you can change the distance of the triggers. All those things, all those things are great. But you can change out the analog stick if you get stick drift for $20, saving you a ton of money in the long run uh, from buying other controllers. So I get it, it is certainly a steep, steep entry point at $200, but if you've got the money and you know you're gonna play, it might be worth the investment. Okay guys, so those are the five uh, accessories that I would suggest that you get, uh, or at least think about. Again, it's not for everybody, but you know, maybe prioritize which ones you think is best for you. If this video helped you out at all, guys, please like it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe so you don't ever miss any of these Dad Hut videos, and we'll see you on the next one. Oh,